uh, switch on the recording. So the topic is that I will try to cover the basic terminology that you are going to use, the experts are going to use the next four or five days. And the primary objective is not only to cover the terminologies by its definition, by its uh, uh, conceptual background, but also will demonstrate through the hands-on experience. I will use the R language where I will take the data, I will play with the data, I will try to explain their real meaning of those variety of terminology by using code, by using the data, because the data is a essential part of the data science and machine learning. Without the data, we, can, we can't assume any learning uh, kind of things. So with the help of data, with the help of coding, with the help of implementation, I will try to cover the basic terminologies. You may write the question in between. I have also my eyes on the chat box. These are the basic content with the limited time I will try to cover. I will I will try to demonstrate what is the model, model development life cycle, the terminology with the hands-on, R installation, how to import the data into the R, how to play with the data by using the R code, how to split the data. If there is a required to convert the attribute between one type to another type, how can we do it? Rescaling of the data like a normalization, externalization, such kind of things I will try to cover throughout the lecture. So these are the basic content that are going to be delivered. I start with the word normally at the beginner time, many person use these two words to convey the same meaning. Anonymously, they use sometime algorithm, they sometime use model like like a name base, like a decision tree, uh, like a, a linear regression. Sometimes people say it is a model. I have to, uh, uh, the model is performing like that one. Sometimes they say the linear regression is an algorithm. So first, you must be clear what is the algorithm and what is a model. Really, they are the same thing, or really they are different, totally different. If if something they are not same to each other. So what is the journey to, to convert the algorithm to the model or vice versa, if you think. So this is the discussion I'm going to have, how the word algorithms arises and, and how the model is different to the algorithm. So let me open the another window. Yeah. So before uh, jumping into the detailed discussion, let me discuss about the model development life cycle. So one end you can think about the algorithm, another end you can think about the model. So we have to do something so that we can reach, we can start from the algorithm and we can reach to the model. So it is a, it is a total a journey. That journey normally we flag with the word model development life cycle. So what happened in that journey, there is a different, different phases, different, different steps are there. So first is that, suppose the problem is given to you, you are very much clear about the problem. Suppose the problem is to predict the stock prices, simple problem I have taken, or you can assume that the problem is given to, to diagnosis of a particular disease by using uh, uh, X-ray. You can, you, can, you can consider X-ray as an input, and we have to give that input to the algorithm that, or model. You can say the algorithm will uh, uh, give the prediction. Uh, this disease may be uh, uh, with that patient like that. So the problem is clear. Based on the problem, you have to select the first algorithm. So algorithm selection is the first phase. Because the problem statement, you cannot change. Because the problem statement in the business, in the real life, is given by the user, a client. So 
that is fixed based on that problem you can solve by using many algorithms many methods many methodology i must say so first you have to select that this algorithm or this methods i have selected to solve that problem once algorithm is final you have to go with the training phase so what is the training i will cover also in the detail so after the training your algorithm become the model so slowly slowly i will try to go towards to the modeling so once you have algorithms after the training what is training i will explain after the training the algorithm will change become a model so uh, once you have a model it's not a suggestive guideline to deliver that model to the client or user you have to validate it you have to evaluate it so again validation evaluation is again big chapter of the machine learning once the validation evaluation is over the model have a given acceptable performance then you may think about the optimization optimization may be in term of memory utilization how the model required how much memory its speed any other issues if there are you can do so that is called model optimization so these are the basic four building block when you go for the model development sometimes it is called modeling so ultimate definition by is if i say the model means trained algorithm so that that uh, definition really you can you can connect uh, with yourself the model means trained algorithm algorithm is there but once is trained it become a model what happened after the training after the training algorithm learn something from the data and the algorithm can perform can take some action behalf of the human being so ultimate ai in machine learning we want a system we want a method that can act as a human being that can work at the place of human being they can take the decision independently that is a big objective of the ai so after the learning the algorithm acquire that capability so that the algorithm can take the decision they start predicting the whole discussion is around the predictive data analytics at the morning session it was nicely taken by the uh, professor vyas sir uh, he he has given a lot of focus on the descriptive data analytics predictive data analytics prescriptive data analytics like that so model is some time you can imagine encapsulation of the data and algorithm we you required algorithm you required a data mix it it become a model so mathematically if you try to understand the algorithm is a mathematical operation now slowly slowly uh, uh, coming to the uh, more um, basic terminologies like a algorithm is a mathematical equation so don't go with the algorithm de uh, de definition with the data structure point of view it is a finite state of uh, uh, the unambiguous uh, uh, instructions that uh, give the uh, legitimate output against the valid input like that here the algorithm is a mathematical equation so once you feed the data to the algorithms something through the data the equations get changed equation get change means what they are not going to create a new equation the equation have a many parameters so ultimate any of the machine learning algorithm you try to imagine maybe deep learning or maybe maybe neb base maybe linear regression logistic regression svm all having a some parameter or coefficient sometime you have listened the name parameter uh, setting or parameter hyper tuning so every algorithm is a full of parameter full of coefficient so we have to estimate the value of those parameter those coefficient by using the data so once you have successfully estimated the coefficient of the algorithm it become a model conceptually now the mathematically i am going to demonstrate what is the meaning of that here 
algorithm is there hyper parameters are there here the hyper parameters are there we have to estimate the value of those coefficient and the parameters by using what by using the data the type of data you provide you feed to the algorithms the the, the value of hyper parameter get change and the model get change i mean to say you keep the same algorithm over here algorithm means suppose that linear regression algorithm you have taken or any any line equation you have taken you feed the data it will estimate the sum coefficient then it become a model you change the data a little bit the coefficient will automatically will change and you will get the another model so what the magic normally at the beginner time the people think the model as a black box it is not like that the magic i want to focus over there all the uh, participant please focus over there i am not changing algorithm at all i am not making dot changes in the algorithms and parameter these are dot same what i am changing i am changing only data set the moment i will change the data set you will get the different model so it is a very uh, a beautiful relationship between is that you may create a different different model by using the same algorithm that's why if you try to recall the definition of the ai is that ai and machine learning is a field of computer science that try to develop a system that have a, a capability to learn automatically without explicitly programming so the word without explicit programmed means algorithm i am not changing at all i am changing the data the moment you will change the data algorithm algorithm will learn the different picture the algorithm will learn the different thing so what i am just want to convey over here is a very beautiful topic suppose you have a algorithm a you provide the picture of dogs or images of the dogs after the training the algorithm will have ability to identify how the dog look likes means in the real time if you feed the uh, if you feed the image of dog the algorithm will give you a message this is the dog to do one thing you change the data you provide uh, uh, the data set or images of banana don't make change anything over here it is intact the moment you will change the data and do again the training uh, uh, process algorithm will learn how to look like the banana you change the data set again provide a data set of the cat it will learn the pattern of the cat in the real time it can predict so suppose these three type of data set you have feed to the algorithms in the real life real life once any time the algorithm will sense the images in the real life image it can predict whether the image is dog image or banana image or cat image so what is the magic here i am not changing the algorithm at all i am changing the data and it is changing its behavior that's why it is called explicit implicit programming we don't need to write the program explicit so ai is always a explicit programming and conventional programming is always a uh, sorry ai is a implicit programming and the conventional program is the explicit programming explicit programming means you have to write the solution you must have the idea you must have a formula to define the dog if you have a mathematical formula to define a dog a banana a cat you don't need a machine learning you can write that program in the conventional style that is called explicit programming but in many applications in the world that don't have mathematical or logical solutions like a pattern recognition such kind of thing you cannot define the, you don't have formula mathematical formula that can define the dog so such kind of applications the explicit programming concept doesn't work 
anyhow you have to use the implicit programming where the system automatically learn the solution we cannot provide the solution to the algorithm algorithm must have a capability to learn the solution how the dog how the banana how the cat look like so it is the total happen during the training phase or by using the same algorithm you can have a different different model so more a detailed picture uh, uh, we can see over here it is a simple example i have given for the linear regression the linear regression is nothing but uh, uh, i'm not going to cover the linear regression here in the detail but i think i hope many of the candidate or uh, participants know about the linear regression other participant may assume that it is a algorithm so linear regression is the line line is a equation of the line like y is equal to mx plus c it is written mx plus c so it is the algorithm once you feed the data the algorithm go to the training phase it is try to scan the data multiple time try to learn the pattern inside the data once the training over it become a model you see over here in the algorithm there were two coefficient or two parameter b0 and b1 after the training we have estimated successfully the value of b0 is 5 value of b1 is a 6 so we have successfully estimated the value you change the data keep the same algorithm over here you will find the different coefficient numbers are here means different model you have it will have a different performance different characteristics it will give you so that are the basic things uh, so the questions written by mr amit uh, so what is the exact difference between ai and ml so i think now it is open uh, uh, clear to everybody ai is a simple algorithms having a parameters yeah, and 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 uh, non estimated parameter if mathematically i talk about once you give the data to the algorithms during the training method we try to estimate the coefficient or parameter of that algorithms so algorithm with the estimated coefficient estimated parameters is known as a model so algorithm means a dummy thing it it can't do anything for you it it can it can't take any action but the model is the something that is useful for you because the algorithms you have given the dog cat kind of data it learn how the dog and cat cat look like it become a model then you can use the model for the real life so the algorithm never be used for the real life algorithm cannot take any decision algorithm is identical for all the cases but you change the data you will get a different different model so i hope uh, somehow it is clear these two words ai and uh, 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 algorithm and the model so let's move ahead thank you so uh, many in many times in the book and the people use the word modeling so modeling means it's total if you follow this uh, model development life cycle from starting to selection of the algorithm training and and validation evaluation optimization so this complete phase when you you start journey it is called modeling so total development life cycle you can define by using the word modeling in many books in many literature during the modeling they more focus on the training and testing phase training is a something testing is a something so what happen over here in the training now i will now i will go in the detailed discussion so the training during the training uh, i'm i am just uh, describing the things with the classification of supervised point of view okay so mine's predictive data analytics point of view i'm i'm just trying to describe all those things so during the training we give the data that contain the correct answer that contain the target attribute so correct answer means or target attribute sometime they use them in the same way these are the two same word so algorithm have to learn 
this is the input and this is the correct output means you can you can thought about if you visualize what i'm just trying to convey you try to visualize suppose that this data set is giving to you this data set having so many features so many variables okay so variable one variable two variable three dot 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 variable n suppose there are n number of variables are there variable means like age name uh, weight or any 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 character any characteristics of against any object or attribute you are considering so one of the variable you have to define as a target variable as a target variable and other variable you have to define as a input variable sometime it is called output variable or target variable sometime it is called input variable for example in image data set these all are the image pixel value contrast image one image two dot 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 image total number of m number of images are there image one is a dog image two is a dog this is the cat this is the cat this is the cat so you have uh, suppose you have m number of images where some set of images are for the dog and some set of images are for the cat so what is the meaning of that these are the input data in term of image these are the input data and this is the output data or output variable so what your algorithm have to learn because i am feeding the image plus image is for what image image is for dog so i am also giving the correct answer so such many images of the dog we have to feed to the machine algorithm similarly many image for the cat we have to feed the input is the image output correct output there is a label whether uh, the image is for dog and cat so sometimes it is called output variable and input means if it is an image then image input if input may be in the uh, excel sheet or csv file or any other kind of variable in the form of variable may be there so what the algorithm try to do technically the input is given to you output also given to you during the training i am talking about during the training i am talking about here the algorithm will try to learn the relationship try to learn the relationship between input and output try to learn the pattern try to map try to establish the mapping between input and output so it is the objective of the training phase where they try to establish a relationship between input where input uh, feature or input data with the output uh, or target variable they try to learn the pattern how uh, the dog look likes what is the characteristics of the dog or try to map with the output so that happened during the training in the training we always feed the output what happened in the testing in the testing we have output but we will not give to the algorithms we give the input to the algorithms only because after the training algorithm become a model try to understand that's why i have given enough time to to make it clear algorithm and model once the training is over it become a model so i feed my data to the model suppose one image image one i have given to the model or suppose it is a dog image that i know but i will not disclose the label of that image whether it is a dog and cat i will not disclose to the algorithm so sorry it is a model model have to predict whether it is a dog or it is a cat suppose your model has uh, predicted it is not a cat it is a dog then i will during the model evaluation it is i am just explaining here testing because the training is over my model have learned the relationship between input and output variable now in the real life 
I am just giving the image as input without disclosing its label. Your model have to predict the label, suppose dog, then I have to match how many time it have predicted correctly and how many time it failed. So it happened with the testing. So graphically, if try to uh, explain the things, it is here. Training data set is here. We have to feed the training data set to the algorithms. Here the algorithm training phase means data plus algorithm. After once the training over, it become a model. So what happened in the model? We 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 feed the data without the label, without output variable. Your model have to predict. They are label and here we have to check it. Suppose 100 images I have provided during the testing out of 100. How many time my model have correctly predicted their label or their output. So that is called. Testing. So it is iterative process. It doesn't go in one go. Doesn't complete in one go. So once you realize that during the testing your model performance is not adequate. It is not in acceptable form. Then you have to change the some parameter. Parameter setting you have to go. You have to transform your data set. There may be problem with the data set. You have to change your data set. All those things you have to try hit and try hit and try hit and try until. You don't get the acceptable performance. So that is that is. Uh, uh, about the training and testing or training and testing combined become a modeling. So here I have discussed the modeling. In the term of training and testing. OK, so uh, going ahead with the with the small small things we have a lot of here to discuss. What is feature variable and attribute? So these three words you can consider are used to convey the same meaning and more related to the data set. So when the data set is given to you, you should know what are the features are given to you. If the variables are given to you. What are the attributes are given to you? All the three words are same. So what is the feature feature is any measurable property of the object you try to analyze. So normally in the data set, Suppose in, in the Excel format or CSV format, columns are the features. Columns are the variables, columns are the attributes. And the quality of the feature, the quality of the data set directly depend on the performance of your algorithms. If you have a data set, you have a features, but you don't trust the value of those features, those variables. And they are not in correct format, acceptable format. And you have used, uh, suppose you have used such kind of data set for your model building, your model will not make you happy. It's going to fail. So features are only the things that are responsible for, for any kind of learning. Feature is the real, really important thing. So better future, qualitative features means better model you can expect. So if try to open like I have a data set, uh, I'm just going to open for you. Just for understanding purpose, uh, the data set is given to you, suppose this. And this data set is uh, uh, a medical expenses of a person of a family in a year. So suppose there is a person having a age 19. Gender is female. The BMI is 27.9. Number of children zero. The smoker years. The part of city lives. Uh, you can say like a part of country. And the medical expenses of that person is 16,884. Maybe dollar, maybe rupees. So. These age is a feature, a variable, gender, BMI, children, smoker, region, expenses, all are the features, all are the variables. So these are the things you can understand. The quality of variable means 
how you can trust on the value of that variable if there is a lot of outliers lot of missing value lot of noise means your data set is not in good format you should not use such data to train your algorithm first go for the data p processing you try to fill the missing value you try to find out the outliers you smooth your data try to make it free from the noise then feed then use your data for any purpose so this is called the uh, features variable or attribute coming to the next sometime the people use the word label or the class label what is the class what is the label so it is totally with respect to the classification or or or, or supervised learning or predictive data analytics so the variable that you target means first try to understand whatever the data set is given to you it contain the features one of the feature you can select as a label as a target variable sometimes we'll, we also call as a class so whatever the variable is giving to you you have to select one variable as a target variable that really you want to predict for example suppose here the data set i am using to predict the medical expenses of a person in the next year the coming year suppose the problem is given to you so which variable you will select as a target variable the expenses because in the historical data this is the 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 variable that define the annual expenditure of a person with related with related to the medical issues so this is the target variable it is a regression type of problems that's why the target variable is not a categorical variable it is a number you can predict both i think uh, aparajita madam have taken uh, the lecture about supervised learning and supervised learning or or uh, under the supervised classification and regression so just write on the chat box do you understand uh, the meaning of classification and the regression what is the classification what is the regression both are, both type of problems comes under the supervised learning so chat box i am waiting your response uh, the participants are, are well aware about the regression and the classification my question is that do you understand the meaning of regression and the classification please write on the chat box yeah someone is writing yeah correct correct yes then okay then okay so yeah very good very good thank you thank you so the output variable when the output variable is a category like you want to predict yes or no yeah yeah so uh, so it is called such kind of problem we call uh, classification same in the unsuper uh, supervised learning if your problem is given when you have to predict some number continuous number numeric number it become the regression problem so the classification and regression both are the supervised learning because the target variable given the both, both the cases so what happened in the target variable you have to find out and else other variables become the input variable and one of the variable become the class label or target variable so when people talk about the label you should understand he is he or she is talking about the target variable so uh, in one problem in one go only single variable you can designate as a class label or target variable there may have multiple input variable but there may not have or there must not have multiple output variable there always have a one output variable sometime it is called target variable sometime it is called label sometime it is called class so i hope it is clear so like in this example data set is given to you there is medical related data set age gender 
uh, chest pain type, blood pressure, cholesterol, and many things are given. And the last one is you see over here, 010101. So many times people get confused. They consider this 0101 as a continuous variable, as a numerical variable, not at all. Don't make such kind of mistake. Here zero means no, yes, one means yes. So it is not a numeric number where you can apply the mathematical operation, arithmetic operations. Here, 0, 01 is the label, it is a category, it is not a numeric number. So sometime you, you need to deal with this, such kind of things. Now coming with the training and testing data set. Earlier we have discussed what is the training phase, what is the testing phase. Here the focus now, what is the data set about the training data and test data. So here we have to whatever the data set is given to you. So normally if say yeah, whatever the data set is given to you, it advisable to divide at the beginning your data set into two part. First part that is the major part normally 70%, 75%, sometime 80% part of the original data we designate as a training data set. And the remaining 30, 25% data we designate as a test data. So training data used in the training phase that you already know. Test data we use in with the testing phase. In the training phase, we, we give the input variable plus the correct answer, the output variable. And the testing data or during the testing phase, we give the data without answer. It is, it is written, the test data without answer, without label. So your model have to produce the correct answer. And then you have a right to match it, whether it is giving correct answer or not. How to split the data into the training data or test uh, test data? I will explain uh, through the coding. I think last uh, theoretical topic is here the type of attribute. So don't consider uh, these type of attribute as a part of data type. It I am not going to explain the data type. It's the type of attribute. Whether the given attribute attribute means this, the column. What kind of attribute it is so there are many 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 kind of attributes are there but at the beginning you can understand the three types categorical sometimes called nominal ordinal and continuous three kind of attributes may have for a simplicity categorical variable ordinal variable and the continuous variable so categorical variable means uh, uh, it is a category and that category may have a different different labels that category may have a different different labels there may have a small small subcategory but under that subcategory there will not be any ordering with the example I will explain first first let me discuss the definition a attribute may be a categorical attribute or the nominal attribute that attributes may have a subcategory but that subcategory must not have their ordering means under the subcategory you cannot arrange subcategory like highest to lowest or lowest to highest mm -hmm. so if there is no internal ordering among the category subcategory it it's contain a categorical attribute with the example i will explain ordinal attribute is a type of categorical attribute, but it always have the internal ordering among the subcategory. You can arrange the subcategory in clear order. Okay, for example, here now going to with the example, categorical attribute suppose me male and female. So like a gender, like a gender male and female. So male and female are two subcategory under the gender. Then you can you cannot arrange whether the male and female in highest and lowest order. Both have the same equal. Both are the equal. But suppose in the example, you have a 
uh, uh, variable that discuss about the economic status and the economic status is some some people may have a low some have a medium some have a some have a high so economic status is the is a kind of category but under that category there is a three sub category low medium high that have the order so once you can arrange sub category in some order it doesn't call as a categorical variable it's become the ordinal variable so in in machine learning type of variable is more related to its meaning so once you feed that such data to the algorithms where it algorithm will see it is an ordinal variable you have to define it it is an ordinal variable algorithm doesn't know by itself you have to define it as ordinal variable once you define the its ordinal variable algorithm can understand oh low medium means something medium means something or high means something they are not equal but if you say this is not an ordinal variable it is a categorical variable so all these three subcategories are equal the, the algorithm cannot distinguish between them in term of priority so that is a basic difference so for a, another example you see over here uh, uh, what is gender gender male and female it is a categorical variable what is the color of your hair brown black gray other it's a categorical you cannot arrange the color of your hair like a in order like it is a lower it is a higher you do you cannot make the order it is important it is not important like that where do you will where do you live in the country north east west the part of that category uh, that 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 country is a categorical variable but here lower side you can see the some example how do you feel today very happy very unhappy unhappy okay happy very happy so here these sub category having some their own meaning you can arrange them you can take the decision based on that how you satisfied when you give the feedback uh, to the any product means very good not good not satisfied very poor poor it is a ordinal variable because their category having some order you can arrange here to lower to highest way so it become the ordinal variable so it's always desirable once you feed such kind of data whatever the data you have it obvious your data must have some attributes and parameters then you have to define during the coding age is a uh, it is a continuous variable this this it is, it is a categorical or ordinal you have to define it reason is a categorical ordinal you have to define it explicitly you have to define it then you can expect a, a good learning from your uh, uh, modeling process otherwise randomly you take the data feed to the algorithm hey give you some model it will it will learn something but it is not a correct practice that you should follow okay going ahead continuous variable i am not covering it is it, it is a, any numerical number any floating point number any number we we call as a continuous variable like age like a bmi like expenses all are the continuous variable here region and and the gender are the categorical variable we don't have the ordinary variable here going ahead so i have a we have a some more times here we try to demonstrate all the concepts we have learned through the coding so don't worry about if you don't have any exposure with the r so uh, at our level like a researcher faculty members and the pg students uh, the language is not a bar it's only matter of syntax and and luckily the r python and matlab having the similar syntax so here just uh, uh, i have just given a link you can copy the link and and you can just paste over here yeah so you just paste over here uh, it will direct to the uh, 
one website here uh, based on uh, the operating system you have like a window mac or any other operating system you have you can download the r studio so r studio is nothing but a simply uh, editor like a like a spider for the python like an anaconda for the python so r studio is the editor it's 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 very lightweighted you can see over here if you visible the r studio for the window 10 having a 156 mb only so many of the participant having this misconception uh, you require a big processor and gpu system to implement the machine learning algorithm not at all it's very lightweighted software like a 200 150 mb you install it it will work for you it's free available open source so once you install it uh, once it get installed uh, you have to write r studio over here uh, yeah yeah just click so r studio is very simple software you don't need to set many any library any path nothing you have to do nothing it is like a simple uh, uh, exe file installation ordinary exe file installation on the system you just click over here then go to next 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 it it will install in your system once installed you can open like that it's editor so here uh, you will see the four section of the window here yeah four section of the window yeah like that so here i will now we need to write the code like two plus two whatever the code you can write it will give the output here uh, all the script you have written you can call over here you can save over here and 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 that part is normally used to saving the script whatever the script you are writing it will come over here whatever the code you have uh, 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 run earlier you can see the screen is not visible having our code uh, someone is writing my screen is not visible please other other participant please write on my screen is not visible the code is not visible to you someone have written uh, a query ah so for dr arpana please uh, uh, check your system uh, for other participants uh, are comfortable they can see all those things thank you so don't make the things uh, here uh, messy so try to understand we will focus over here this is the part where you have to write the code if the output is as a numerical or any form it can give the output immediately if the output is in the video or in the image format so it will appear the output over here so try to focus at the two section two part of uh, this editor here you have to write the code just write the code make the enter the output you will get it if output in the form of image graph you will see at this part is designated to uh, there appear the image and video as output very simple So there is a two command get wd set wd. What happened? Get wd means get working directly directory and set wd set working directory. So it is optional. You it is not compulsory to use it, but it make the code very easy. Uh, what happened in the machine learning? Uh, always you have to play with the code, uh, play with the data. So if data is somewhere in the, your system, you have to whenever you require the data you have to write the complete path like c user dr vivek tiwari document suppose your data is here or for a simplicity suppose the insurance is the data set like the data set we have shown you insurance is the data set okay i want to import that data i want to play with that data i want to use that data for training testing purpose so every time i have to upload that data i have to play with that data so data is here you see the C user SP desktop first lecture. So every time I have to write that path followed by the data set name. So what happened if you make that folder or that path as a root directory, you can avoid writing such a big string or URL every time. You can directly use the, your data set, name of the data set, and it will be available for you. So suppose i am going to copy it i want to make that folder or that path as a root directory 
So first, let me check what is the root directory right now. Get wd is the root. Get wd. Yeah. You see, this is the by default root directory. I don't want to play with that root directory. I want to change it. So set wd is the command. You just double quote, copy paste. Make it backslash. Don't forget it. Enter it. Some spelling mistake. Said WD spelling mistake. Yes. Yeah. Now again check whether it successfully updated or not. Yeah. So it is a path. Now I can directly reference whatever the things available in that path without using that path because it is the root directory. Going to the next, import uh, the data into the R. So there is a variety of data you have. Data may be in text format, data may be in Excel file, CSV file, image, video, JSON file. The type of data you have, the R comes with a rich library. Whatever the data set you can, you can imagine, the corresponding function defined in the R, you can use this, that corresponding functions to upload, to import your data into the R environment. So for make the discussion very simple, we have a, this, this file uh, in this folder and that is a CSV file. Suppose, suppose for instance, you have a CSV file, you want to import it. So there is a command read.csv. So the read.csv is the command you can use and the argument you can pass the data set name. Just fire that command and store all this data set into the new variable, the variable name, whatever you want, you can give A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z, I, J, K. So for a simplicity, just I'm going to copy and paste over here, you can see just enter it within a second it has successfully uploaded the data uh, into the r environment and 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 which variable uh, have defined to store or hold that data is a df1 so you want to see that data yes you write that to variable name enter it just enter it the whole data set is here by age gender bmi children smoker region the next column is here yeah expenses because of the space it is appearing over here the whole data set it has appeared so this is the beauty of the r command you can see it is very user friendly very very easy to memorize read.csv pass the parameter only it will do everything for you Similarly, other things are there. Suppose a data set is not in your uh, environment, not in your system, somewhere in the URL, in the internet. The read.csv is capable to handle if the data is online. You can pass or provide the link. It will work for you. So variety of uh, options are there. Our packages are like a library in the Python, like a header file in the C, C++. Every uh, 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 big tools like Python or R or MATLAB comes with the packages or libraries. These packages libraries contain the predefined code, code, not only code, data set also. So there is a many libraries that you have to use in the real life that contain a lot of data. Data of Titanic, data of any many medicals or health related data, thousands of data are there, predefined data. You don't need to go to the UCI machine repository. There are itself local rich in term of variety of data sets. So based on your requirement, you can use your libraries and packages. So how to install it? So there is a command install.packages. So the, the moment you will write install, uh, it automatically come. Install dot packages. Here in double quotes, you have to write the package name. If it is a valid package name, it will install. Otherwise, it will give you error. 
like it is not a valid name so it, it, it is it is giving the error otherwise it will start uh, uh, installing for you so it is or or this is the command that you can use what the packages already installed in your system you can list over here if you want to remove some package remove dot package now important thing do not think do not assume once you have successfully installed some package you can use it directly no you have to include your package in your own environment by using the keyword library so once you have to install the package then you have to use that uh, package you have to attach that package into the session that you are using by using the lab library function so installed packages does not work until it get included in the R environment by using the library keyword so please remember that thing so again uh, I'm going to uh, import that data and will do something for you like that so the same similar data I have installed I have stored uh, in the new variable uh, insurance so I want to see the summary I want to know about my data so there is a command is str and the data set having whole data set having in this variable str is something it will give you it will give you a little bit detail about your data like that so what the str command is giving to you data frame is 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 a, is a data structure so that data the excel file it has stored here in in the in the in, it is not in matrix format it is in a data frame, data frame. So data frame is a data structure. How many observations does it have? 1,338. First is here. You, you just cross check it. Just cross check it. You, you see. First one was the column name. So total number of observations are 1338. Correct answer. Seven variables. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven variables. Now one by one. Age. Age is what? Age is an integer type. But data type also it gives you gender is a character here uh, the important thing i will try to discuss plus try to remember because what kind of value it contain female it is a string or character it is a number or it is a floating point number there is a three type of data is here integer character this is the floating point okay in decimal number so let's see what the answer uh, given by the r so when there is a floating point number the r represent as a number it r is r a floating point number means number so the data type in the r here you can assume number means floating point number integer means integer number okay character means a string type of character type of things are there okay so here i will try to cover how to define suppose for example here i was talking about it is a categorical variable it is also a categorical variable others are the numerical variable so i don't worry about but how can i convey this message to the algorithm it is a categorical variable or it is an ordinal variable how can i do it so that things i want to demonstrate for you so here you can see these char 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 these are the like gender smoker smoker means yes or no smoker means yes no yes no yes no these three are the categorical variables suppose or in really they are the categorical variable but the way i have uploaded my data into the R environment my system is understanding it is not a categorical variable it is a character variable so what is the meaning of character and categorical variable you have to understand character means f e m a l e only these combination of the some character 
M A L E combination of the character. So once a variable is a character type variable, means your if you feed that data to the algorithm, algorithm will not consider it as a category. Algorithm will not learn the concept it is female or it is male. In term of yes, yes is a category, it's a, it's a type of customer or, or patient that is smooth. It is a one category. No means these set of people don't smoke. So once it encounter yes, it would convey a different meaning. When it encounter no, it should convey a different meaning. But algorithm can't understand it automatically. You have to explicit provide to the algorithms. Think in that way. So if the data types are or attribute type R in the character format, the algorithm will consider uh, all the things in the same way, like yes, no, yes, no, is a Y, E, S, yes. It is not a category. So I hope what I'm trying to convey, try to understand, once the things become category, so the algorithm start dividing your data set based on that category. For example, if a smoker is a category, so how the algorithm must know out of 1300 data points, 600 data points are uh, the smokers, remaining uh, 600, uh, 600 uh, around 600 uh, data points are non-smoker. Non so how I convert such character type of data into the categorical data, that is a, that's I'm going to demonstrate. So, how to test it first? Suppose if gender and smoker are the categorical variable, so there must have a labels. Label means subcategory. So you can say, yes, sir, it is very easily in gender having a two labels, male and female. Similarly, smoker have also two labels, yes and no. Then I will I will ask second question. Okay, if they are the labels, then print it. Or if you are able to print it then also i want to know how many observations belong to the each label please write the code for the same okay, okay try it so label is already a function defined in the r you pass the variable it will print the number of label if if the variable has so here insurance insurance is a variable suppose i want to access one column i have to use that dollar sign in any of the column you want to access suppose i want to access the age yeah so that is the code i have demonstrated by using the dollar sign you can access each individual column of feature name now what is the target i want to i want to know the label of uh, how many labels in 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 the variable gender have okay so i will use that label uh, command and we will we'll see what the answer it is giving okay answer is null it's very surprising maybe for you because you were expecting the answer, the label should be male and female, but it is giving null. So here you can check why it is giving null because this variable, the sex or gender is not a categorical variable. By default, your system doesn't understand it is a categorical variable. You have to say it is a categorical variable. Then, then, then it will start behaving in that way. How to convert it? Factor is a is a uh, normally factor is a categorical variable in in technically when we say we say it is a category it is a factor both are same thing so factor is a function you have to pass a parameter as any of the feature any of the feature like this this don't pass uh, such kind of numerical variable it will not give any error but it will not convey any meaning 
So suppose age you want to make a category 19 a category 18 is a category 20 is a category it is not good not meaningful it will create a category but not meaningful so here you understand the gender is a category smoker is a category so you can pass one by one these two variables or, or region to the uh, factor function it will convert it so insurance i want to replace the same thing i am converting this gender as a as a factor variable and replacing with the same okay so uh, let me run that command for you it runs successfully now again check the earlier command now you uh, observe the changes earlier the same command i have uh, run over here i have run over here earlier since it was not a categorical variable in the next command the following command i have converted the variable explicitly as a categorical variable now this gender or sex become a categorical variable now it behave in different way now now the label functions can check how many distinct value are inside that variable there are two distinct value inside the variable female male and female you can see okay now run the again that command it will uh, if you remember you see earlier this was the character like 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 a smoker a region itself it is a character but here earlier it was a character now it is giving factor with label to female and male and it automatically encoded one as a female or two as a male so many things are can do in a second for you so once you represent your labels in the form of numeric number it helps in the computation you have to upload your data you have to scan your data multiple times so once it can be represented the category or sub labels in the form of numeric number it increase the computation it make the things more faster so i hope i made it clear for everybody yeah you can see the changes so somebody uh, have, may have another answer uh, another questions i don't want to do each and every such kind of variables i don't want to convert one by one such kind of variable into the categorical variable i want a one line command that can identify which are the prospective variables in the data set and convert accordingly so yes there is a command that is an intelligent command you can again use the same command read.csv which file you want to import you have written extra parameter you have to pass extra parameter is a string as a factor is equal to true so let me run that command for you again the same command i have already uh, demonstrated now with the extra parameter i have used the string as a factor so whenever any of the feature variable is a string type or character type by default it will convert it into the categorical variable yes now then let me run the same command and see the magic yes you see this is the factor this is the factor and the region is also factor having four labels already encoded one two three four like that so that was the part of related to all such things going ahead you can also uh, represent or measure the number of observation in each subcategory so it is called data distribution you can also check the data distribution whether data is balanced or imbalanced so use the table command to pass the only variable name table command or pass the variable name only you see there are four category under this region 
and each category almost having the same number of observations you can you can you can use for uh, like uh, gender you can see 662 are observations are female and 676 observations are male so many things you can play with that one many 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 things okay now uh, going to demonstrate how to split the data if the data is given to you how to divide how to split the data into the training set or in the testing set so let me explain the background so what happened ideally it should be happened in that way suppose the data set is giving to you okay data set is giving to you like that or many time people think this is the data set sorry sorry something happened yeah sometime what happened okay sometime what happened suppose the data set is giving to you these features are given here this excel file the data set is here data set is here suppose there are 100 rows so you know uh, suppose 70 percent part as a training we have to split and remaining 30 percent as a testing you have to testing data you have to split so what people do the initial 70 percent here they 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 cut or they designate as a as a training data and remaining 30 percent they designate as a test data this approach is totally wrong it is a disaster never or never follow that process what is the correct process let me explain suppose this is the data is given to you the same data i am representing over here this is the data is given to you okay so you have to select randomly you have to select ram randomly 70 percent data from the whole data as a trend data and remaining automatically remaining automatically become a test data so try to word try to catch the word random you should not go the data in sequence so not so not consider the data in ordered way randomly sometimes select suppose in the first try you select this one second this one third this one fourth this one so why it happen because random selection always create a subsample that is the best representative of your population what is the problem with such kind of sequential selection is that what suppose your data was arranged uh, in alphabetically may be possible or data was arranged will to suppose some column like uh, age it was uh, arranged in increasing order so initially the children are there then middle age are there then older are there so you need to give the training uh, to the algorithms that contain the equal amount of children's what happening yeah so you, you should uh, so what is the ideal way is that you should select uh, the data randomly so that whatever the training data you are making it must have the balance between uh, the age of children's age of uh, middle age age of uh, olders so that during the training my algorithm can learn the pattern of uh, holistic pattern so if you feed the data to the algorithms having only children and middle age persons it can learn the patterns accordingly but in the real life when you feed the data of the old persons it will predict wrongly 
because in the training you have not shown the data that are uh, belongs to that category so but when you randomly how can you solve that problem by using sampling by using random selection all the data points have the equal probability to be a part of training data so if technically i talk about you have to select your data point in such a way each and every data point must have the equal probability to be a part of training data and vice versa but if you select the sequentially means the data that are in the lower side that have almost zero probability to be a part of training data so that is a disaster okay some questions are there uh, may have a similar data during the training yes we have and, and during testing totally new data yes so not similar data so the question is that during the training you have a data with the data algorithm learn and during the testing we should provide a data that is not a part of training so totally new data you can say the, the, your, your algorithm have not seen that data because at the initially you have divided your data into that uh, training and testing data testing data you have kept uh, somewhere else once the training is over you feed the testing data first time to check the performance so it's uh, correct the testing data is totally new for a model okay so that concept uh, is clear to everybody why we should select uh, randomly or, or or with the equal probability once you is going to split the data in a training and testing data it is clear to everybody please it's it's always help to get a better model otherwise no, there is nothing uh, going to be a uh, syntactical error there is no syntactical error so how can you do it you can see there are many methods first of the method i'm talking about what the code is going to do first suppose insurance was a data first you have to find the size of your data first you have to find the size of data once you have find the size of data you have to 70 or 75 percent uh, 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 rows you have to split as a training data so how to find the size of the data first question so n row n row is a one one function you can call it and it will give you total number of row in that data set like you know 1333 so i have to find out the 75 or 70 percent of that number so that's why i have divided suppose 75 percent uh, data i want to make as a training data so i'm going to divide with the point 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 seven five so whatever the number will come i don't want to keep as a fraction number so i'm using the floor function okay so floor or ceiling seal whatever you want or in teaser whatever you want you can use it so i'm dividing this number like that one by one you see around 1338 1003 rows we have to split as a training data so this code is something how many uh, line uh, rows we have to split and that number i am going to store sample size i want to create the sample of this size technically if i'm talking about so you see the full code i have run you just do this thing so sample size so first my objective is to find out how many rows i'm going to create or suppose that was the data set uh, this is the sample i want to create okay the size of the uh, sample should be what in our case it is one zero zero three 
Once we have a sample, then what? Then we have to call a function sample. Sample means this typical sampling I'm talking about. So it is going to create a sample. Okay. How many size of sample? This. So we, we have passed the two parameter. So ultimate how it, it works, it is very, very beautiful things is there. We have to first draw a number. We have to draw first index number. You can consider as an index number like one, two, three, dot, 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 one, three, three, eight. These are the index number. And these are the sequence row, uh, row number, you can say. Out of that, one, zero, zero, three rows, we have to randomly select like one, four, like that. Okay. So first this this index I have to create. This index I have to create. So sequence len is a is a is a uh, function. You can pass its maximum value like here 1338. So it will create uh, index value uh, from 1 to 1038. So you can just copy that code and see how it works. Yeah, look, it had created the index value sequence. So out of that data set, I have created the sample uh, population. Of that, that population randomly, I will select 1003 uh, samples as a random. So this code, so comma, second parameter of size. So I want to, going to create a sample of the size, sample size from this, this index value. Okay, so I'm here going to store that uh, uh, randomly selected index value into the training index. So it is a training index. So these are the index. It is not data set. Don't be confused. It is not a data set. It is a index number. So next phase, I'm going to select those rows that index number are here. So randomly, I will select 101201, then 1186, then 506, then 626, then 617. These are the index number. These are the sequence of the rows. I have to cut it. I have to store in the training data. So that's why it is index. It is not a data set. So now here, let me explain how the indexing work. Mm, yeah. Insurance. Here I have to pass, suppose I want to access the first column. Actually, this, this is a row. First row and first column. Index start from 00. It will be 19. You see, 19. Suppose, no, I want to print first column. I want to print sub first column. So, it is all the row, if you try to blank means all the row of the first column. So first index represent row, second index represent column. So, first column, all the row. Blank, blank means all the row. You see, 19, 18, 28. 19, 18, 28, like that, like that. Okay, so that indexing you can understand. So, so you can also play with that one. Yeah, now you see insurance, which row you want to consider. Now I'm going to create the real data set, real training data set. So name of that data set is train. How to cut the 70% of the rows that code I'm going to explain. Here, train index means these index value. I already 1003 such values are there that are randomly selected as index value. These row I want to select with all the columns. With all the columns. You see, done successfully. You see, we have code. 
and and now uh, you can just observe it it is giving what kind of results thank you and remaining once i don't want to consider such index value when i'm going to create the test data means remaining 30% be a part of test data so by using the minus uh, sign you can discard these number of row means ultimate the remaining row you are selecting you can see so that is the code for how to divide your data randomly into training and testing that was the method one uh, uh, next uh, part is uh, method two in one yeah a slightly different method is there but it's very interesting you can see the sample i have used n is the number of row number of size of the data one one to n and 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 size means uh, how many row how many data point you want to keep in the sub sample so total 70% data i want to keep in my sub sample so any the to, uh, sample size sample size not population size original data set size is n and i want to select 70% of them randomly replacement false you try to see most important thing let me explain what happen there is a two method suppose that is the original data set or that is a population you can say in first try i have selected this one so it is a part of sample it is a it become a part of sample suppose it is a so it is a now there is a two method replace meant either true or either false so replacement true means once you have selected a sample you made a part of your 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 sub sample then if it is true replacement true means it may be it uh, it become again a candidate for a second trial means it may happen in the second trial you're going to select the randomly a second element you it may be possible you you may again select the sample a again over here so it is called replacement true means once you have selected you again replacing over here it again become a part of second trial but if the replacement falls means once you have selected that sample it will not participate in the second trial from the remaining you have to select second one so so means once you have selected a element then in the second sequence you should not select that one you should discard that part that 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 item so it is called replacement false and true so normally when you going to create the training and testing data set replacement always be keep false i want a unique data you need index data again and again i don't want to keep the same same data multiple time i don't want the similar data so that's why we keep the replacement false so here i can demonstrate for you okay first you have to create the sample and we forget to and now we have an end so this uh, earlier command i can run so train index means randomly it has created an index for me yes then once you have an index then the same code you can use uh, for your purpose for your things
so any question please write on the chat box any doubt any question any discussion dear participant please i am requesting to uh, write the question or any doubt if you have please on the chat box okay so the remaining part i'm going to cover uh, i was thinking to skip okay no issue so next one is a rescaling so what is a rescaling so rescaling means here you try to understand you see the range of data so it is a numeric uh, rescaling when i talk about means uh, i am focusing uh, focusing on the numerical data only so age is a numerical data bmi is a numerical data children is a numerical data and expenses is a numerical data so you see the range the range of age uh, may be 0 to 100 suppose bmi means what 10 to 40 number of children is what 0 to 5 6 7 10 expenses 0 to crores so you might have observed characteristic of these features some features having very small range some feature having a very bigger range it is not good for a training or for learning purpose why for a machine learning these are the uh, parameters these are the variables so once you feed uh, the variables to the algorithms algorithm will try to scan the data and their values and once it it counter this is the variable having a bigger values and this is the variable having a very small small value or suppose this age having a bigger value and number of children having a small values so what does algorithm do it is start giving more focus on such kind of uh, variables having the bigger numbers and 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 other variable like number of children it will give you very less uh, less focus so what is the meaning of that algorithm will think this children is the variable is there but is not important variable where the variable having a bigger number is more important but it is not true at all you take the example over here suppose it is talk about the medical related expenses so number of children and medical related expenses is, is depend on the number of children or not you can say yes it will depend if you have a two number of children if you have a four number of children medical expenses will change drastically okay but if your data set is not formatted in a such a way then it start confusing the algorithms where the algorithm will give more focus on the variable having a higher side value so how to solve this problem the problem is solved by the concept of rescaling so there the concept we are going to discuss about the rescaling so there are many methods so in quick way i will cover only two methods the normalization or uh, in the normalization is the min max normalization so what happened over here in the normalization uh, uh, we try to rescale the data with the defined range so in the normalization you can define your range i want convert the whole uh, data between range 0 to 10 0 to 5 10 to 5 or 0 to 1 whatever you want so you can fix the minimum and maximum value accordingly each and every value will transform okay so one of the method is min max uh, uh, normalization where uh, the value all the value will be transformed between 0 to 1 so if I, if I apply the normalization, min max normalization, the age, after the normalization, it will convert all the value of age between 0 to 1. Same normalization we have to apply for the children, for the smoker. So all the variable 
will have in equal range the algorithm will give start giving equal weights to each and every variable the formula is given over here that is a journal formula of the normalization okay so uh, it is it is a general formula of min max normalization so every value you have to subtract with its minimum value divide by its range so ultimate nothing is going to be bigger than 1 in 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 best case it will be 1 and worst case it will be 0 you apply this formula to each and every value 19 18 28 33 like that standardization is a little bit different here what we do we apply this kind of formula when each and every value we have to subtract with its mean divided by its standard deviation so what the benefit of that it does not guarantee the value uh, uh, the range between 0 to 1 it does not guarantee here it guarantee that every value will squeeze between 0 to 1 but in the strand standardization it doesn't guarantee the value will be 0 to 1 it may be any range 0 to 100 1 to 100 30 to 35 may be there but what other benefit it gives? The other benefit is that, yeah, uh, in the term of normalization and standardization are the something used interchangeably. Many person use, but uh, but both are different thing. In the normalization, usually means to scale a variable to have a value between zero to one. But with the standardization, the transform the data to have mean zero. And standard deviation one. Meaning is that suppose there is a variable age. There is a variable age. 19, 20, 30, 100, like that. You apply the standardization and you will have a new variable age one. It will transform something 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 now you do calculate its mean calculate its mean it will be close to the zero this standard deviation will always close to the one so it is a nice property was its mean i don't know what may be there its mean may be 30 the standard deviation may be 10 like that once once any of the data in the world you transform or you standardize by using the standardization the resultant data will always have the mean close to the zero or the standard deviation close to the one so it is such kind of data what happened what is the benefit of uh, if you convert a data with such property statistical property benefit of that such data will always give you this gaussian distribution so many of the machine learning algorithm promote or always ask to provide the data having the Gaussian or normalized now normalization uh, normalized value or Gaussian uh, distribution should be there so it help in that way how to do it so uh, in, in in simple R package there is no such predefined function for the normalization you have to write your function but you can use a predefined already available library you can install it you can use it so you will find the normalization function for your purpose okay so suppose your function here the same definition was there i have written yeah so the function i am writing what the value i will provide okay it will separate from minimum x and divide by its range so that function i have written okay function is ready so now i am calling that function with respect to the age you, you see so normalize a function i am calling what the input i am giving over here x insurance age that column i am giving it have run now print the value of x you see all the age 0 0.02, 0 0000, 0 0 0.2. So its corresponding value 19, 18, 28. So 19 become 19 become this, 28 become this, next become this. So in that way it has changed everything. Next implementation. Luckily, 
the scale is a function by default come with the R package. It function for the standardization. You call that function and pass the only the variable that you want to convert. Okay, so for you, I'm just copy that copy that code is very simple. Yes. Just I have seen you, uh, you, you just see the output. Now you might have uh, observed some values are negative, some values are positive. It come always because you need to keep the mean zero means 50% value should be positive side, 50% value should be negative side. So it will squeeze the in the data in a such a way 50% value are the positive numbers and 50% value are the negative number like that. Last things mean you can check the mean. A standard deviation of the transformed data. Look, it is very close to the zero. 10 to the power minus 16. It is very close to the zero. Mean is already predefined function in the R. You can pass the data, it will calculate the mean. Similarly, standard ASD is a function uh, that's uh, represent the standard deviation. You can pass the transformed data. The standard deviation is one. You can check it. Okay, so uh, that was the target for uh, the today session I have made. So uh, from my side, the session is over. Whatever I have tried to uh, cover during this uh, time, I have covered it. But uh, machine learning, uh, data science is a is a big stream, and many of the candidate and participants we have working in a different different direction. So you may have a different different questions if you want. So you you please ask. You can write uh, a doubt if you have. I will I will try to I will try to answer it. Thank you, Sriwani, writing your for excellent uh, positive comment. Thank you. So uh, many many uh, participants are uh, asking for the video. Yes, uh, all the workshop that comes under the atal, uh, every session we record, and every session uh, throughout the five five day, we have to upload to the AICT portal. So all the session will be available in the YouTube. So it, it is not there like you have to log in and you have to, once you log in, you can only access those things. All the session we have to upload into the YouTube channel and that YouTube link we have to submit to the AICT. So everything you will get it, don't worry about that. Uh, I'm thankful to to all the participants who are writing good comments and they like their session. So it's really a uh, motivation for me. And, uh, and uh, I will also take one or two, one, one more lecture, maybe last day, maybe possible. So there was a plan to take a one or two lecture in middle, but some urgent work I am going out of the station, so I will not able to take. So don't worry, I'm requesting to everybody, our, our institute is going to organize five ATAL workshop. All the details are in the institute website, in the ATAL, AICT ATAL workshop also there. In the coming workshop, uh, 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 I'm going to take more lectures, means 70-80% uh, uh, lecture, I will take uh, some workshop. So, uh, all FDP uh, are there, so if you want, you can register. Maybe some overlapping knowledge will be there. Don't worry about that. So one knowledge. So that only one announcement. So PPT we will provide. Don't worry. So I will share all the document to the OJASAR because the OJASAR is a main coordinator. I am the co-coordinator. Uh, 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 some some FDP. I am the coordinator. He is the co-coordinator. We have a team. We are working on that one. So you will get all the all the resources. Don't worry about that. So it, if it is okay or fine, then we can we can stop uh, from here. Okay, thank you again. Or uh, we have a WhatsApp group. Uh, I'm also there, and uh, 
uh, whatever the query question doubt if you have you can write on the whatsapp group you can give your feedback there also it is unofficial uh, whatsapp group so don't hesitate to write whatever the lecture you like or what uh, the things you don't like what you want to improve you can also write right over there so thank you very much for your uh, patience and uh, how nicely you have attended uh, the lecture it is very nice to me and uh, it motivates us to organize such fdp and workshop thank you very much ratio of the training and test data always be around 7 to 13 there is no fixed uh, things uh, someone is writing the ratio of training and testing data it should be 70 30 percent like that Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to leave it. Thank you. Yes, yeah, please leave. Attendance link, I think Ojas are already shared and, and that, that attendance link is enough, I think so. So please uh, leave it. Uh, the session is over. Thank you.